Hi everyone, welcome to Divi Framework. In this video, we're gonna show you how to stop tracking admin users in WordPress using Google Tag Manager in your Google Analytics. And we're also gonna show you how to add a Facebook pixel to your Google Tag Manager account using the Divi theme. All right, let's jump in and I'll show you how to make it happen. Okay, so here we are on a website. Now, if you haven't watched my original video, which shows you how to do this, um, you can see right here that I've got my Google Tag Manager stuff all set up. Now, you need to have that first. There'll be a link somewhere around the page here or check down in the comments if you don't already know how to do that. Um, if you're on Facebook, just check the existing links and maybe on Facebook, but you're best off finding our tutorials on YouTube. Okay, so let's take a look at this. I've got my code enabled in the header and footer, but I need to get what we call variables and different variable layers. To do that, we're gonna use this uh, wonderful item from Duracell Tommy's Google Tag Manager for WordPress. This tool works really well, and his website has a whole bunch of great tutorials on it as well. I'll link to that in the comments. Make sure that you check out how to do that. So it's pretty simple. I mean, you guys know how to install plugins. So we simply go to the plugins area and click add new. So we just do to Google Tag Manager in our search. Just like that, pretty simple. Um, and that's gonna search and we've got the item right there. So I just click install. All right, that's installed, let's click activate. Okay, the item's now activated and it says, please enter your GTM ID. So I just click on that link up the top. Now, out of these four options that we've got here, it says footer of the page, not recommended, custom, codeless injection, and what we wanna do is do off, just like that, and I click save. What that does is you see, I've already got the code set up inside my Google Tag Manager items. So I really don't need to do that, but I do need to get my tag ID. So I'm going over here to uh, the particular tag that I'm gonna use, um, and you know you can look at the different stuff on the items. I've got the, the details up here. That's blurred out a little bit at the moment. You can't quite see it, but that's where it is inside uh, Google Tag Manager. So let me just uh, highlight that. I'll copy it, head back to my website now, and I enter the ID and click Save Changes. That's now saved. So the next thing I do is I go into my basic data. And what do I wanna store here? Well, <coughs> I don't really need to store any of this extra information, but what I wanted to point out is under here is these links. You know, the first time I did this, I missed this stuff. So I wanna get search data. I want the logged in status and the user role. Um, visitor IP can be helpful to me. Uh, AdWords, I wanna do remarketing, browser, all this stuff, it's all beta, I don't really need it. Weather data, again, don't need it and site data, don't need it either. You could use this if you're doing like a multi-site environment, you know, so you can get the different IDs. Under events, I wanna pick up a new user rego, and if the user is logged in, and then I can also go to media events, and there's experimental events there for YouTube and stuff. This particular client doesn't use that. Scroll tracking, that's not really necessary for this one. Blacklist tags, nope, don't have to worry about that. Integration. Don't have to worry about that. Um, if you did have WooCommerce, this is where you'd do that kind of stuff, all right? So, you know, you make sure that you check on that, those kinds of things if you need it. Um, in this particular case, these guys have WooCommerce as a catalog, so it doesn't matter. We're not wanting to track the add to carts and things like that. So then I click on advanced. If there's anything here that you wanna get, you can put it in. Uh, data variable names, things like that. Look, you really don't need to turn any of this stuff on. Um, I find that you know the default way that I've set it up works completely fine, and credits, of course, we don't need to do that. So my Google Tag Manager is now set up and ready. What this has actually done is make a whole bunch of different variables and things available to me. So we've installed the Google Tag Manager for WordPress options. We've got the data layer all active and working. That's fantastic. We've That's a big thumbs up. That's all great, but how do I make use of the data? Well, I need to go into Google Tag Manager now and start to put a bit of work in there to be able to make this all work its magic. 
So let's jump onto the screencast and I'll show you how that happens. So inside Google Tag Manager here, I've got these triggers. All right, and I've created a new trigger and that uses a variable and that's down in the variables area. And I've got this variable called visitor type. So if I click on visitor type here, let's see what I've added. So first of all, I labeled visitor type up here and I created a data layer variable called visitor type. Okay, so what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to delete this and do it all over again for you guys, just so you can see it. So let me copy that. It's all good. And let me go delete. Done. Get back to the trigger and I'll delete the trigger as well. Okay, perfect. Go to our variable here. I'll delete this and do it all again for you so that you can see exactly how this works. Fantastic. So we go new. We want to use a defined variable. It's going to be visitor type. I want to go into my variable configuration here. Click data layer. Visitor type just here. Okay. And click save. That's it. So the plugin this Google Tag Manager plugin provides the variables for us. So inside here, you can see all the different types of variables and things like that, that it has, all the different cool tools that are there. It's fantastic. It's well worth checking out all the different things you can do with it. And his website is fantastic, by the way. So let's take a look at this now. So I've got this variable all set up, but now I need to set a trigger. Now this trigger needs to be triggered when I'm on a page and um, I'm an admin. So I click on here and I'll say on a page view, on some page views where my visitor type equals administrator, just like that. Now you could add any types of these as well. So you could start to actually track different events by editors and things like that if you chose to. So then what I do is I, up here, I call this the admin page view, okay? So whenever an admin is viewing a page, we add that up there. Perfect, just like that admin page view. Okay, the next thing that we do is click on um, my tags. And then what I wanna do is edit my Google Analytics track, um, tag that's tracking currently. At the moment, this just tracks all page views. It works completely fine. But what we wanna be able to do is add what we call an exception. So I wanna say, if the admin page view is triggered, the all page view right there won't be triggered because it's an exception. It's saying, hey, this the admin page view was triggered, don't track the page. Okay, I do it like that. Perfect. Um, click submit, and then I just say, you know, added admin tag, added WordPress admin tags, just like that. Beautiful. Click publish. There we go. Fantastic. So now I've got this new stuff all added in, and my new triggers there. Now, the next thing I wanna be able to do is create a pixel. Okay, so I'm inside um, the business tools, business.facebook.com, and I'm gonna create a pixel. So to create that pixel ID, this is for Telescope Tires and Batteries website. Click create, just like that. And this gives you a very similar analytical kind of setup to what you have with um, Google Analytics, but you need to be able to get the pixel on to your actual website. And the easiest way to do this is to integrate with Tag Manager. So all we do is simply click up the top there, say it's Tag Manager, and then I'm gonna say Google Tag Manager. Okay, I click continue. Then I connect up my account. The authentication screen pops up here. And you know, that's all pretty easy. Um, I'm already logged in as my stuff. And then that authenticates. And then I need to verify the account. <coughs> So we go to the different accounts that we've got here. I'm blurring this out at the moment because, hey, I've got a lot of accounts. So I need for you guys to see all of that. And then I click uh, Finish Setup. That's all verified. Now you can download the Pixel Helper into your, um, into your different tools. And I also recommend that you, if you are a common user of a smartphone, who isn't? Who doesn't use a smartphone? I don't know. But if you're a web developer, you've most likely got a smartphone and on your smartphone, you should have the 
Facebook Analytics and the Google Analytics plugins on this. I have both of them, they work fantastic. So once I've done that, I just click close. All right, that should be all good. Let's go over to my Google Tag Manager and see if the tag's been added. Always double check this stuff because sometimes it's just not there. It doesn't look like it's there this time. So overview, setup pixel, integration there, tag manager there, continue there, that's there. Runs through the item, let's go telescope tires. That's the container, finish setup. It says I've already done it. So I'm just refreshing here to see if it's gonna come up. There we go, Facebook Pixel, it's all in there, fantastic. So now whenever anybody visits the website, including admins, the Facebook Pixel will be fired as well. So what have we managed to do here? Well, uh, let's, come up to the end screen. Oh, still getting used to some of this stuff. All right, so what have we done here? Well, we've basically gone in and set up our triggers. This means now that when you're an admin, you're not gonna be picked up in Google Analytics. You can go to a link below, um, find out how to put those triggers on for debug mode should you choose to do that. We've also installed the Facebook Pixel in Tag Manager. It's the easiest way to install the Facebook Pixel. Why is this important? Well, it just saves you a lot of time and it's the best way to integrate things without having to add a whole heap more plugins to uh, WordPress. You know, I, I don't need to have five different plugins to do a Pixel, do a Google Analytics, use a Tag Manage Fire, fire off a couple of events here and there. I can use one tool now to fire all of my events. And if you like this kind of video and you want to understand how to fire more events, well, join my website. It's just down there for free. Make sure that you become a member and we send out emails when we create content like this. Of course, why don't you think about subscribing as well to our actual YouTube channel and um, you know, we send a whole bunch of stuff out there. Make sure you tap on that notification bell too. Now, I hope you loved this video. If you did, give me the thumbs up, share what you found in your comments below and I wish you all the best of luck in implementing everything you need to do with your tag manager.